Ready to go when you are, John. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs, and I'm Jonathan Friedman. We have a wonderful guest up next. We have Anthony Clayton, who's CEO of Blue for Bluebird Graphic Solutions. Welcome, Anthony. Welcome. Yeah, Pleasure having you. you. Pleasure to have you on Radio Entrepreneurs. So uh, tell us a little bit about your company, what it is that you do. So uh, we're Bluebird Graphic Solutions, and uh, we are custom fabricators of uh, architectural uh, specialties and uh, as well as signage. Um, we really enjoy doing custom fabrication of things that sort of defy uh, a name. We also do uh, some landscape uh, architectural pieces. Um, wow, you know, so really, really diverse in terms of the types of uh, projects that you work on. Yeah, it's most. It's really about custom building and craft is really where we center. And in terms of uh, various mediums that you work with, uh, it sounds like that's probably somewhat creative too. Uh, it is. So we work uh, with wood, metal, plastic, glass. Um, we really are proud of our uh, fabrication approaches uh, as well as uh, welding skills. Uh, and we have spray finishing right in our shop as well. Wonderful. So tell our listeners, how did you get into this business? How, how did you uh, how did you start? Because it sounds as though it's uh, a very somewhat unique. Uh, it's not the type of thing that you see every day that people are involved with uh, custom fabrication of signage and landscape design and all those sure. pieces. It looks like you got some wonderful pieces in the background uh, behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my home. But uh, I don't think anyone gets into this business on purpose. I think that's the funny, the funny piece of it. Uh, our industry tends to be uh, sort of graphically creative people, visually creatives. Um, but signage isn't really something that people realize uh, exists as a thing that people make, even though the world is full of signs. So um, sort of take it for granted. And then, you know, when you stop to think about it, wow, somebody actually had to conceive of this and build it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so we really do. Um, uh, so the way I got into this is I, I was actually uh, maintaining uh, computer systems that were for uh, sign cutting or vinyl cutting. And, um, and I realized, you know, sort of the uh, p possibility and of, of actually making signs and, and worked my way up from the uh, bottom to the top, as it were. Um, working my whole career has been in Boston, but I've worked on projects uh, from, uh, Disney World to and Universal Studios and uh, other sort of big, you know, stadiums and things like that. So uh, that's sort of how I cut my teeth. So how, do, how does the process typically work? Uh, somebody come to you with a concept uh, and a design or does somebody come to you and say, we need to have visibility for our business or I want a landscape project, but I don't know what I want. How, how often are you guys called upon to be the conceptual uh, creative, um, I'm sure there's a piece of it no matter what the project, but uh, how or how often do clients uh, come to you with, you know, fully baked ideas and say, just execute? How, do, how does that happen? Uh, they're usually half-baked. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we work with designers and architects, primarily general contractors uh, and their clients. So we're working with uh, sort of top tier um, design professionals and uh, construction professionals. Um but we receive an idea that is uh, that is almost always never been built before. Exactly. So we don't do the initial concept development, but we do do the uh, sort of second level design, which is the design that takes something from paper space to uh, 3D. I, I was going to say you probably do the practical application of it. You know, going from the conceptual. Yeah, this is what we'd like to. Now, how do we do it? Right, right. <laughs> you guys sort of get charged with the how do you execute? Right. So, uh, Our work has to stand up to the wind and the elements and, uh, and be able to you know, be transported and assembled and all that. So tell us a little bit about that because uh, scale, uh, what, what, what's the largest sort of uh, piece that you've ever worked on and, and, and how long does something like that take? Yeah, so we worked on a sculpture that is in front of uh, 888 Boylston Street for Boston Properties. And that was about three tons of uh, stainless steel and steel. Uh, had some granite at the base and um, was a very involved piece. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think when we started that. Something like that will take uh, sort of a year of, of seeing and quoting and getting involved. And then our timing has to be very precise uh, in terms of uh, the finishing of the landscape. So 
you know, we can't be in too early when it's dirt and we can't be in too late after the uh, pavers are closing up the ground. So um, when we work on projects like that, they tend to be a very long lead times. And actually, most and, of our work is a year or more. And tell us a little bit about your team, because I would imagine um, it's, it's a challenge to have a, a very uh, a functionally diverse team, given that you work in so many different mediums. You find people that are woodworkers and then people who are working with stone and people working with metal, all, all different skills, correct? That is uh, completely true. One of the things we look for in our employees is curiosity. Um, we find that, uh, yeah, you have to be interested in all manner of things, um, you know, from chemistry to um, physics, um, because the challenge of trying to build something right the first time is, is enormous. You know, the second time is easy. Anybody can do that. So, uh, so but our team is um, uh, very much a collaborative team, uh, very often uh, – with backgrounds either as uh, as artists or uh, sculpture backgrounds or uh, industrial design backgrounds. Wow, so so a pretty varied mix of people as well. And uh, how is how has that been as an entrepreneur, sort of uh, attracting and developing uh, that team? Uh, around you and uh, you know you've been at it for a long time um, I would imagine that uh, it, you know it's it's always changing uh, continually changing in terms of uh, the demand based on the projects that you're working on and because they are such large scale projects you must often have to find people to execute a project how, how does that go for you well we've finally gotten to the point where we have a stable team a stable competent team you know that's mature and experienced and um I'd say that was one of the hardest parts of starting the business was building that team. We went through, uh, in the beginning, we hired whoever would show up um, because we didn't. And hope, really, they, and hope they came back the next day. Uh, yeah, some did. <laughs> um, I mean, there's some crazy stuff that went on or some crazy people that we hired. But, um, you know, as we were working to build credibility as a company, as a creative company, you know, demonstrate that we can be reliable and, um, trustworthy. Uh, and as we went and we built that, um, that record, if you will, it became much easier to bring people in who, who, uh, former competitors or, um, to bring people in who saw what we were doing and, uh, and could believe in what we were doing. And so that's gotten a lot easier. And you're working on a very large public project now. I don't know if you can uh, disclose it, but, uh, you're working yeah, on, on, we're working on the MBTA's uh, Green Line uh, extension uh, through Somerville. And uh, certain projects really define you. And this is one. Uh, there's so much paperwork and you know, administrative stuff that goes outside of the, you know, it's not a question of can we build it. It's can we, uh, can we keep going on the paperwork and keep up. And, uh, but that's, you know, sort of next level for development of the company is, um, how well we can manage, uh, you know, administratively heavy projects. Uh, and it's going quite well, and we should be finishing that uh, around the end of the year. Give us a sense. I know uh, you, you talked about signage, and I can imagine some of the stuff, you know, uh, along the extension. But what, what types of physical builds are you talking about? What, what are the end products, if you will? Uh, so for the uh, MBTA specifically? Yeah. Um, for the MBTA, uh, if you go to a typical station, um, there'll be signs uh, bringing you in from the outside, you know, off the street. So we call them lollipops, but large um, freestanding signs with the T's logo on them, uh, all the way to the platform signage with uh, with uh, area maps and uh, you know, sort of um, directional information. Uh, and one of the more fun aspects of the project is that. Um, each of the stations has uh, worked with an artist to sort of convey the sort of the spirit of the neighborhood. Oh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, so that's fun. So we've been working with those artists as well uh, to properly sort of um, translate so you, so their the, art. I, I, from, Oh, interesting. So you're not actually displaying their art. You're, you're actually taking their works and, and creating them uh, onto signage. Uh, well, yeah, it's part of the whole platform package um, wow but it's been uh, some really innovative stuff and we've had the chance to uh, meet local artists and 
we've always enjoyed supporting uh, artists as well. So how many projects will your company be working on at any given time? It sounds like there, some of them can be very large scale, which would seem to preclude you from you know, working on other ones. I'm always fascinated. I was thinking the other day, I was watching one of these uh, car shows, you know, where they mechanics type thing. I'm not going to mention what it was, but, you know, they've got this build that they've got to get done in six days. And, you know, another car rolls in that's got to be done in six days. And there's only three guys to go around. So you must face that all the time where you've got these massive scale year long projects and, you know, four other ones come in the door that need to be done in the next 30 days. That's exactly I, I, it. I love your questions. It's so funny. Um, I watch those shows too, and I enjoy them <laughs> immensely because, yeah, there are a lot of parallels to what they're doing, to what we're doing. Uh, any given time, we have about 80 jobs going at a time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So but, you know, all different phases, and we have projects that will be going into 2023. Um, but, yes, it can be very challenging uh, managing priorities and understanding what's hot, what's not. Um, projects will go into a sort of dormancy, and then you have to sort of catch them at the right time to make sure that we finish on time and and that's a that's a big challenge with the with the uh, business I, I hope you don't mind me asking how many folks do you have on the actual production floor and that's you know taking out designers and people that that are sort of cre the creative people but how many people are actually working in in um production on a daily basis about 15 people split okay so it's, it's a yeah. nice size group yeah and uh, keeps keeps you busy, I'm sure. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of things coming coming at you all day long, I would imagine. Yeah, uh, but you know, it's really fun watching the work move through the space, and uh, seeing the progress on a daily basis. And um, and you know, where we're in a place where I can trust the people, it's it's especially fun because I'm not getting as entrenched in the sort of day to day decisions on how things should be made. Good stuff. Anthony Clayton, CEO of Bluebird Graphic Solutions. If people want to reach out to you, learn more about your business, to talk to you about a something that they've conceived and want to get off the ground. Uh, we didn't really talk about individuals, but it sounds like you sometimes do. Is it only commercial landscape or will you do commission pieces for uh, individuals as well? Uh, we've done, we're doing a little bit of that as well. But, um, but yeah, you can check us out on uh, www.bluebirdgs.com. You can email me at aclayton at bluebirdgs.com. And um, yeah, we primarily are working with uh, larger companies, but we're happy to give advice or um, really contribute um, in any way that we can. We're trying to support, support the community and, um, and really be a resource for people. So. Great stuff. So developers, architects, building owners, anybody wants to do something unique in front of their building and uh, stand out, you're the guy to come to. Yes. Wonderful. Anthony Clayton, uh, CEO of Bluebird Graphic Solutions. It's been a pleasure having you on Radio Entrepreneurs. Well, it's been nice being a part. Thank you. And we'll be right back with another story on Radio Entrepreneurs.